Hello everybody, this is Adam from Wax Pack Gods. Hope you're doing well. Today, I have a wonderful cello pack of very old and very valuable Cleveland Indians baseball cards. Okay, there's some debate about both of those claims, but you can see there's a 1980 card on top and a 1979 card on the back. So, you know, these cards are 39, 40 years old, so at least they're old. But I think I will title this video Very Old and Very Valuable Cleveland Indians Cards. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you might have seen one or two. Um, or I went through some cards from a collection that I acquired from a childhood friend a few years ago. Um, this guy, I think, is a Reds fan, so it's not too surprising that he just kind of jammed some Indians cards into a plastic bag and suffocated them over the years. Let's see what he has here in terms of Indians. So we have Eric Wilkins, sorry, Eric Wilkins on a 1980 Topps card. You can see the cartoon there. Eric's 15 wins at Portland in 1978 were most for baseball in triple A ball or most for season in triple A ball. Okay, so he led triple A with 15 wins. Pretty good, he went 15 and five actually. Good, uh, good record. Wayne Garland looking very 70s there as the 70s waned. Ha, waned. Let's see. Wayne was named as Texas League's Pitcher of the Year at Dallas-Fort Worth in 1971. That's also a 1980 Topps card. And here's a young Ron Hassey looking very happy on his 1981 Topps card. And got a couple of cartoons there. His father, Bill, was a minor league outfielder from 1949 to 1952. And then in parentheses, uh, Ron was All-American on 1976 NCAA champs at University of Arizona. That's something I didn't know, or at least not since the last time I saw an 81 Topps Ron Hassey card. Here's an 81 Topps Tom Verizer. So he was an all Topps All-Star rookie, and his brother Jim played in a Tigers organization. 81 Topps Gary Alexander. He hit two pinch homers for the Giants in 77, and he he had 27 home runs in 78 to lead all major league catchers. No, I guess he did. Look at that. Split between the A's and the Indians. Right. There's a 79 tops Ted Cox looking all dreamy eyed. He had, oh, pretty cool. He established a major league record for most consecutive hits at the start of his career with six for the Red Sox in September of 77. There's the 1980 Tops, Tom Verizer. So he uh, shared Appalachian League Player of the Year honors at Bristol in 71. So he had been around for a while at this point. Uh, here's one of the First big rookie cards to hit the hobby, the Joe Charbonneau rookie. So in 1980, he shocked the baseball world by hitting 23 home runs for the lowly Cleveland Indians and won the American League Rookie of the Year award. That was a very popular card when it was issued. Oops. Now I always have trouble with this name. Is it Kuiper? Clipper. Anyway, it's Dwayne, second baseman for the Indians. 16, two 16 game hitting streaks and was an Indians Good Guy Award winner in 78. Rick Manning, the lost Manning brother, who played outfield for the Cleveland Indians in 1980 Tops card. And he led the California League with 101 runs and 14 triples in 1973. Must have had some speed. There's Gary Alexander again. Now we get to see him smiling on his 1980 Topps card. Uh, he was the Texas League's Player of the Year in 75. There's Rick Wise 
guy with his shades. So he'd been around for a long time. 64 is when he started. Had 178 victories. He was a good player, good pitcher. And he hurled a no-hitter for the Phillies versus the Reds in June of 71. And he hit two homers in the game. Way to beat my Reds. Rick Waits for no men. Pitcher on his 81 tops card. Back-to-back -back no hitters during high school, and he sang "Oh Canada." You know, there may be some problems when they're talking about high school and your singing career. Miguel Dione was kind of a speedster guy. He stole 50 bases for the A's in 1978. Wayne Garland again, a little more clean cut, still. Uh, popular at Christmas because you can string him around the Christmas tree. Her will no hitter in the minor leagues in '74. Okay, and won 20 games for for the Orioles. Uh, you know what? '76. Jerry Dubzinski, shortstop for the Indians. Andre Thornton was a pretty good slugger for a while there. 28, 33, and 26 home runs in the years leading up to this card, 1981 tops. Toby Hera, Mr. Palindrome. So he had already played for the, the new Senators and then the Texas Rangers and had spent a couple of seasons with the uh, Indians by this point. There's Ted Cox on a 1980 tops card. Jim Norris on a 79 tops card. He's got lots of minor league experience there. Dan Frieselbin. Frieselbin, pitcher for the Indians on his 79 tops card. Wayne Cage, not to be confused with Wayne Garland. First baseman for the Indians on his 79 tops card. Again, lots of minor league record and just a little bit of Indians. Victor Cruz, a pitcher for the Indians. This is his 1981 tops card. He's Blue Jays Rookie of the Year in 78. And he lists horses as one of his hobbies. And there's his 1980 tops card. There's Mr. Palindrome, again, Toby Hera, with his 1980 Tops card. And he led the American League with 109 bases on balls for the Rangers in 77. And he had a 351 on base percentage for the Rangers in 78. It's pretty advanced statistics for baseball cards back in the 80s and 70s on base percentage. There's Mike Hargrove, not a manager, but the first baseman. So he batted 323 at Texas in 74 and was the AL Rookie of the Year. His best all-around season, they claim, was 77. And he has a Bachelor of Science degree from Northwestern State University in Alba, Oklahoma. And there's Bobby Bonds, Barry's daddy. So lots of power numbers there. He's a really, really great player for quite a while. Led the NL with 131 runs at San Francisco in 73. And then we finish up with Tom Verizer following through. Looks like he's watching a pop-up. What do you expect from a shortstop? It's his 1979 Topps card. So there you have it. A stack of very old, very valuable Cleveland Indians baseball cards. Thanks for watching. You can find us at waxpackguys.com or on Twitter at WaxPatGods. See you later.